far tonight. But the conditions are not going to be easy for either of these sides, as no one knows better down on the sideline than David Tapp. Eric, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Well, in a word, atrocious. With good possession and position, LV will get up and play at 25 out from the line. Alexander, long ball out wide, picking up the support. They're just playing ad lib football at the moment, though, not too much by way of structure in their play. On the 20 metre line, they are. Alexander will go to the air on the last. Coming across is Rogers. It's beaten everyone. It All comes right. out of Pitchy, and the Panthers are in. And call for the replay, you want it. David Woods it is, who's picked up the football. We're going to the video referee. Kelvin Jeffs was on unsighted because there was a, a number of Cronulla players. Well, how good, how important the bomb now. Perfectly pitched one is like Greg Alexander. I think there's no problem with that. He got the first touch there, Peachy. That's fair enough. The try, the only reason, that's Wood scoring the try, the only reason is if some of the Penrith players are offside, Peachy gets first grab, and there's Wood scoring the try. Graham West is our video referee this evening, and I don't see that uh, he would have uh, too much trouble with uh, David Wood's crossing for the first four-pointer of the evening and his fifth of season 1998. Penrith don't look real confident here. That's well, a try, they're standing just on the 10 metre line. The try's been awarded, what a great start for the Panthers too. First one, some sides just give themselves up, don't they? Here it came, it came to Alexander, inside the 20. Peachy went up there, but as we've seen a couple of times this year, he hasn't always been that confident and under a lot of pressure there from a couple of other Panthers. You can't really blame people on wet nights here. Beautifully waited there for Greg Alexander. And who'd be a fullback or a winger? You're standing your ground, players running down on the football, you get first grab at a good chase from cross. Cleaned up by Woods at the end. Sure, would have uh, someone like uh, Roy Simmons pretty disappointed. There's a man who's disappointed just to be on the sideline. Really in these conditions, David Tapp, very important that they chase out from marker and put pressure on the receivers. Oh, Richardson at base was absolutely hammered on the 40 metre line. This is Nathan Long, range uh, out wide, picks up Domic. He's put down 25 out from the Cronulla line. And as you say, Steve, easy metres to be gained for the Panthers at this stage. Another 10 metres made. Last tackle now for Penrith. Alexander will again go to the air. Crosses out there, as is Adamson. Rogers left it behind. It's come up again for the Panthers. Six, Six more tackles. Five metres out. Adamson will play it. They'll swing it to the left. Alexander will go for the try line. Great Short ball. ball for Cross and he'll score. I'll tell you what, that was a little bit of experience there from both players. John Cross put himself in a great position to run into the gap there. Alexander, just his movements were across field on the short side from the turnover. There's the six again. Just watch John Cross run into the space. Beautiful play there. Ryan can't make the tackle and that is experience. You talk about experience, Steve Roach. There's 399 games worth of experience between those two players. Greg Alexander and John Cross tonight playing his 150th game. Made it look so easy, didn't they? But as you say, it takes uh, a fair amount of experience to know how to run those lines. And uh, Greg Alexander and John Cross obviously can't hang off a man like Greg Alexander. Put the man that's got the football on the ground. The short kickoff from Cronulla will go into touch. That will be a scrum feed and loose to the Cronulla side. It's a new rule that's coming this year. I can't believe that a lot of other sides don't try and drive the ball as hard as they can. Try and find touch and get the feed and the loose. Good play, and that's a good mix-up from the, the, the Cronulla side. Mixing their football game up, their kick-off. That's good play from them. You can see what might have been a half smile on the face of uh, Matt Rogers. Peachy was there. This is uh, Adam Dykes who's tackled on the 40-metre line. So, Cronulla have uh, first opportunity of the football from the kickoff. This is uh, Martin Lang picking up another five metres with one of those bustling runs of his. Long works the blind side. They're coming at him from all directions. And eventually he's put down 25 out from the Penrith line. Healy, the ball back inside for Nick Graham to go straight through. Shut the gate, he's through to score. The Sharks have hit back. Yeah, good try. You can put it down to the kickoff to the foul touch. Nick Graham, I'll tell you what, the other thing in the wet weather too is you can't afford to grab. A lot of grabbing going on by the Panthers there. They thought they were pretty sweet at the moment. Eight points to nil, but I can tell you they won't be. Here's the kickoff again. Beautifully. Beautifully.
free play, they win the scrum, they get the feed and the loose. Now this is exactly what you can't do, very slippery in these conditions. The inside ball, as we talked about, a little bit of arm grabbing there. Nick Graham showed a good, clean pair of heels to spin 20 metres to put the Sharkies on the board. I thought he was going to run too far then, Nick Graham. He really wanted to bring it right around behind the post because he knows how difficult the conditions are. You can see the Panthers there just falling off the tackles. Bobby Thompson tried to cut the angle down, but Nick Graham running too high and too strong. There he is, finally puts it down. A prop forward, Danny Lee. Again, getting involved in the Cronulla defensive effort. This time, finds some ground, taking play up towards the 30. Gee, they're inside the 10 metre line. That, that's what worries me about the game here. Just was marking at the play the ball, that line to make the big hit. You can't say that they're back to 10 metres. That's a good front on hit there from Danny Lee. And you got Lee. Picks up another metre or so in the tackle of Lang. Having a dart Ooh, from pinch. dummy half. Here they go. Good set of six so far as Alexander looks to find the inside ball. Oh. That hurt. It's Davidson it was. Both players colliding. Davidson was the one who got straight back up. You can see here. Well, there's a head clash there. And uh, John Cross. So. Already didn't, scored a try this evening. It's a head clash. Didn't take him long to get involved, did it, Tappy? <laughs> no, it didn't, and uh, he's the ideal player in these conditions, Les Davidson. I'll tell you what, Blocker, that's the last head in the world you'd want to run into. Oh. Yeah, well, there's a bit, of, uh, a bit of juice coming out of the eye there. So John Cross is replaced. He's not coming off with a cut eye, Tappy, is he? He's got a fairly nasty gash just under... Uh, He's right eye on the cheekbone. He'll be right. He'll come back out, John Cross. Yeah, you can't Blood, can't, can't, blocker. can't wrap them up, can you? Can't push off the second, though. Brought down in front of his post. It's nine metres out. Howland. This is uh, an existing. He's taken high. It's uh, Brett Boyd. Calvin Jeffs asking uh, very politely for the tackles to be we should just get on with the game. a little lower. Again, they work the blind. The inside pass for Boyd. This is Thompson. Out there is Domic who runs into his own player. There's no one there. Domic sets sail, brought down 15 metres out centre field. Which way will they go? They swing it to the left. Alexander, flat pass, out wide. Comes back now for Chris Hicks. Hicks, he throws a speculator. It's picked up by the Panthers. Oh, One more. They cross. That's the go. Game. Craig Gower, third try. Well, there goes the importance of trying to close off in your defence. The ball isn't dead until it's, the tackle is actually made and a player put on his ground and has to get up to play it. That's beautiful speculation there from Chris Hicks. They're the sort of lucky thing to win your football games. Alexander have the presence of mind to back up on the inside. There's Rogers going off the quick foot and it's actually his wing that the try's been scored on. Just have a look at this for a little bit of speculation. There's Hicks jumps over one player. I don't know how he got the football away here, but Alexander's got the presence of mind to keep supporting the football. Twists out of a tackle, the oh. offload. And Gower gets an easy one. There was a couple of moments of absolute genius there. It must be said there was an element of luck as well. But the Panthers in the last couple of weeks, we've seen a couple of times, Steve, have really made their own luck. I'll direct you to one of the tries they scored last weekend against the Sydney City Roosters with a great pass as well from Steve Carter. Look at that ball. What about the pickup from Alexander? Oh, genius. As during last weekend's game against Parramatta. See there, Nathan Long. Watch tonight some uh, unforced errors. I know the conditions are pretty ordinary out there tonight, but there were some patches of uh, Cronulla's play that were very disappointing in the first half. There's a few players starting to lay around and to play the ball. That's a sign of tiredness. Here's Adamson. He's been tireless tonight, hasn't uh, he's he? He's played well. Matt Adamson will play it on the last. Alexander will go to the boot. It's come off his own player, it went straight into the back. And the Sharks may come away with it. That was brilliantly picked up. Cronulla will play it nine metres out. Wesson lying all over the football. Dykes it was. Now 
they don't need to pop any stupid passes. Two metres out, they'll play it. Graham for Dykes, the inside ball for Richardson to score! Finally, it comes off for Cronulla. Well, I've been asking for him to get in the middle of the ruck and run the football. He's a big, powerful thing. Virtually untouched. He's another jumper grab from the Penrith Panthers. I thought he was going to run to the CBD. Here's the replay of the kick. Alexander not clearing out of his own half. Kicks it right into his teammate there, Brett Boyd. And here's the inside run again. The pass, a little bit of jumper grabbing. Richardson. It was a great ball too, wasn't it? Great inside ball from Adam Dykes, who'd uh, already featured earlier on in the play, and Richardson ran the right line, except Forrester is there at number 16. Very unlucky not to get a penalty in that set of six tackles. Let's see the high ball go up in a contest. Here goes Dykes. Here we go. Out wide it is. Peachy's there. He's the one who goes up. He backs it back for great hands. Dykes again. I've got numbers out to the right-hand side, and we may have a goal-line dropout. Look at the hands of Dykes again. Unbelievable. Great skills in very trying conditions. That's exactly what they needed there, the Penrith team. Had to get back there, not enough of their players going out to contest. Look at them. They're all over the shop, the Penrith defence. The chip through and cleaned up in the end. This is Samet. Healy holds the ball up and he's tackled 15 out from the line. Gets up quickly and plays it for Rogers. He's got support outside. And it comes back. They've been tough on that all year, the referees, and all of a sudden, Kelvin Jeffs has let a couple go. Gower. Missed. Oh. Pulitua puts it down. Look out, if they can get it to Rogers, it's good night. Rogers now steps into dummy half. Cronulla with a great opportunity inside Panthers territory. Peachy's there with some space. Brings the man back inside. This is Dykes. Dykes keeps it alive. He's brought down 40 out. Pull it to her, the man in the tackle. Have a look how thin they are in the middle of the ruck. Right where Lang makes that charge. Very, very tall. He's brought down in the tackle of Drew. Jeff suggesting that that uh, tackle on Dean Treister was not too high as Dak. He's been good tonight, hasn't he, Gore? When you have to put your hand up, that's a tough assignment. So that came in the form of Adam Dykes. You can't really blame Greg Alexander there. He needs to have support when he runs the football. Ryan no offloads again. Dykes, this is Graham, gets through one. The ball back inside for Peachy, brought down 30 out. A fast play the ball and they might have them. This is Rogers again from the play the ball. Rogers straight through, puts oh. the ball down. Yeah. Rogers is saying that the ball was stripped. No, I reckon he's lost it, Carl. This will tell us. Yeah. Oh, one on one. Fair enough. Well, the answer oh. is yes, it was stripped. And the answer is yes, there was one on one in the tackle. Rogers did all the great lead up work, found the space, attacking the football in defence. Second, he played 15 out from his line. This is Howland. Were those players offside? The crowd thought so. Lang! Oh, taken high! That's a send off. This time, there will be at least a tackle. Oh, no, on he's the out now. Deliberate swinging arm over the top. Ely has left the field. The offload picks up Martin Lang. And a shot. 12 out from the line. Long cut it. cutout pass. Peachy's there, last tackle. He'll want to play it quickly. Look at the short side. No one there. Dykes picks it up brilliantly again. This is Lee having an attempt. Oh. Danny, what were you thinking? I'll tell you what, have a look at the blind side. They should have run there. There was not one Panther 
on the short side. No one looked. Danny, please. Snapshot. Oh. <laughs> well, even if he just caught and parked. Out there is Russell Richardson. He's already scored one try tonight. There's a bit of pushing and shoving goes on in back play. Healy will look for the field goal. It's a shocker. And it's gone dead, so we'll have a walk to the 20 metre line. Well, they've had a couple of shots. Look at the Panthers trying to slow it down now. Kelvin Jeffs, sensibly, has our man of the match. Eric, thank you very much. A highly entertaining game in atrocious weather conditions here tonight at Shark Park. And our NEC man of the match, with the compliments of our good friends at Harvey Norman, is the Cronulla number six, Adam Dykes, who really grabbed the game by the scruff of the neck in the second half. And uh, as a result, got Cronulla back into it. Well done. A tough match out there tonight, though. Yeah, it was tough. You know, the weather didn't help. And um, Penrith, they've been uh, on a good run lately. And... Uh, we knew it was always going to be tough with this weather, like I said, it's just a tough slog fest. You've really matured this year as an established first grader? Yeah, all uh, th through to the injury of uh, Groney, you know, gave Mitch and myself a chance to get a combination and early on we weren't uh, going too well, but, you know, hopefully uh, we'll make the semis later on. Thanks for joining us tonight. Also here with me in the Players' Tunnel is the big number 10 from Penrith, Jody Gall and Steve Roach. Uh, described you as one of the, uh, the fine up and coming young forwards in the game. You certainly gave it 100% tonight. Yeah, mate, we knew we had to give it 100% against Granola, you know. They had a chance to stay in the semi-finals. We didn't have much to play for, but we're just playing for the spirit of the club at the moment. We're just going to stick it on a few, few of the teams in the last few rounds and uh, hopefully come up with a few more wins. You must be disappointed. 14-6 leaders at half-time and absolutely in control of the game at that stage, but uh, a lot of unforced errors in the second half. Yeah, mate, I think that just comes down to a bit tired. We lost three of our interchange players. We only had one player involved for the whole side, so... You know, but I, I think the boys stuck in and uh, it was a good, we ended up having a good draw, so we're happy with that. Thanks for joining us. 14 points all here in atrocious condition. Well, Cronulla captain Mitch Healy, the side showed some ticker to come back tonight after trailing 14-6 at half time, and it can't be easy to come back in these conditions. No, the uh, conditions were abysmal out there, and uh, you know, we started the game very poorly, and uh, they, they deservedly went in at half time with the lead, and uh, you know, we are lucky enough to come back in the second half. Just a case of too many unforced errors in the first half. In the second half, Penrith started to make plenty of those. Yeah, the tide sort of sort of turned. Uh, we were putting too much pressure on ourselves in the first half, and you know they were they were good enough to capitalise on that. And you know we uh, we got up in their face in that second half, and uh, you know forced a few errors and come up with a couple of tries. You've obviously found yourself under some added pressure with uh, with Green being injured so early in the season. Yeah, well, I think the whole side has. I mean, we lost to Irinikio uh, last year, and they, a lot of our uh, attack revolved around him, and to lose Paul so early on, it's uh, certainly put a lot of pressure on the side as a whole. But, um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, we, we're going along OK, and uh, if we had been able to sneak one or two more games, we might have been sitting a little bit better, but, you know, that isn't the case, and we've got to really put in now. Thanks for joining us. Another solid performance from Mitch Hilly. Cronulla coach John Lang also now joins me. Uh, a good comeback. You would have been pleased by that. Yeah, I was very pleased with our second half. You know, we got off to a bad start, although, you know, like, I think the boys are struggling a little bit for confidence at the moment. We've played a lot of hard football, you know, understaffed against some very tough sides. And the boys have really been, you know, they've been putting in every week. I felt the start of the game, you know, the ref found a penalty, in, uh, you know, for holding down, which he could have found some later on. But, uh, and they scored from a bomb, and I think that sort of put our guys, you know, sort of knocked their confidence a bit. We started our first couple of sets really well. After that, we just really went into our shell. You know, passes were going astray, and we're really looking down the barrel at half time. But I was really proud of them the second half. They played, that's a lot of pressure they were under, and they really fired back. Apart from the unforced errors to which you've alluded in the first half, and that you paid dearly for on the scoreboard in the first 40, was there any other aspect of uh, Cronulla's game that you feel you need to work on during the week? No, oh, there's probably a few, you know, but look, I think it's there, you know, it's it's not easy to go out there and, you know, it's, it's 24 weeks, we've been going, what, uh, 17 now, I think, isn't it, something like that, or no, longer than that, 19, and uh, the guys have been putting in really week after week, and, and you just you just can't be up there at the top of your game all the time, uh, as I said, they've been understaffed, outgunned at times, and uh, they're, they're really putting in hard, I was really pleased with the... Uh, come back in the second half and the one point could be you know could be like gold for us thanks for your time thank you well Roy Simmons 14 points to six leaders at half time it slipped away yeah it did um, we control the ball very well in the first half and um, uh, you know we we played uh, some really good passages of football second half um, 
we had a few injuries. We had we lost uh, three players and we're down just to the one subby and uh, and uh, I think we just got a bit knocked up. You know, we made a few errors there in the end and uh, probably through fatigue more than anything. You had really no football in the second half. Uh, I guess if there is a positive to emerge from the game, the guys showed some ticker. They had to scramble for most of that second half. Well, they did show a lot of ticker. I don't think Penrith won a game. Well, they never won a game in my time. I don't think at Cronulla. Uh, I think 93 was the last time we've won here. So to come here and, and you're playing against Cronulla, who have got the semi-finals to play for, we haven't got the semi-finals to play for, and we're down to uh, 14 men. I think it, yeah, it was a pretty spirited effort. You've mentioned uh, some injuries. Any ones of major concern? Yeah, I don't think we'll see Mark Guy again for the year. Uh, he, he tried to play again today, and he's got a spur, and it it uh, gets every now and then he lands on it, and it, it uh, hits the ligaments and buggers him up for a while. I think we'll, we'll send him in and get him operated on, get him right for next year. We think Johnny Cross has uh, fractured his cheekbone up there, so he'll probably be out for the year. And um, I haven't sort of checked on Brad Drew, but I think it's a pretty bad calf tear so we've probably lost another three players a night which is a little bit unfortunate just when we've uh, had three weeks without a loss really. Back to the drawing board and uh, learning to play with all the injuries taken into account yet again. Yes, yeah, uh, not much friend but anyway we just got to stop positive and get on with the rest of the year. Thanks for your time. Thank you.